evening. Okay, I need to move. <laughs> I've been sitting in this chair all day. This is Pastor Barbara, a.k.a. Preacher with Parrots. Today is June 28, 2015. I feel like I've been sitting in this chair all day. We had our morning program, and then about two hours ago, I put a movie up. And uh, we had uh, about as many people for our surprise movie being put up as uh, we do for a regular program. My plan was to speak uh, for a little bit this morning uh, about forgiveness and play you a seven minute clip made by Corey Ten Boom. She was a Dutch woman living in the Netherlands. Her family owned a watch and clock repair place. They had a home, a large home, that was made from two homes. And because they were kind of built together, there were places in it, uh, a closet here or something else that you wouldn't normally find. And when the Nazis invaded uh, the Netherlands uh, and were killing Jews, they took a baby... Jews, whoever needed a place to stay and hid them out in their home. I remember th this happened um, beginning about 1937 when I was six years old at the time. And um, the movie was made in 1971. The true story of their arrest and uh, the time they, the girls, uh, the women, were in a concentration camp. If anybody does an excellent job speaking about forgiveness, it's Corey Ten Boom. In the 70s, uh, she was on every radio program, many television programs. Uh, only a few were in color. Uh, she spoke at camp meetings, uh, churches, conferences, conventions, always about forgiveness. And you can't do forgiveness without mentioning the Ten Boom family. Let me um, talk about this and then I'm going to give those watching you by video an opportunity to know where that clip is and where the movie is. And I'll play it live for those in my live audience. And then I'll go back and maybe do a chapter in Colossians, which is where I'm supposed to be on Wednesday nights. A lot of people think if somebody's done you wrong and you don't forgive them, you have hurt them. You have paid them back. But that isn't how it works. First of all, a lot of people that have really hurt you don't even know you're hurt. Honestly, they don't. They're so used to talking and acting the way they talk and act that they don't think it's all that unusual and that you should be hurt. Or, if you've reacted, if you've cried, if you've turned away, if you've obviously been hurt, Many of them just feel, you're too emotional. You're too sensitive. And many 
don't think they've done anything to hurt you. They don't think they owe you an apology. And beyond that, any of them don't care. They don't care whether you forgive them or not. And you may be so hurt by what somebody's done to you that it's just tearing you up inside. You might feel like getting even with them. You might feel like getting as far away from them and hope I never have to cast eyes on you again in all my life. But it's quite likely they don't think they did anything wrong. They don't think they owe you an apology. And guess what? Guess who's hurt? You are. You've already been injured by what they said to you or what they did to you. And now you're being expected to forgive them and they don't think they've done anything to be forgiven of or they're not concerned with your forgiveness. What does the Bible say about it? Well, before I mention what the Bible says about it, whenever um, I'm doing a little medical research, you know, the doctor says you have this, 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 or you get a medical report and there's a word on it you don't understand. I understand about 90, 95%, and I have to look up the rest. You have to be careful when you're researching something that you getting information that's good, solid, information and it's not some doctor that lives in the boondocks or lives in a big city but he's got strange ideas about things and he wrote an article you don't want to trust your health to a fly-by-night person with one blog so there's a couple of places that I look to for good solid true medical information and one of them is Mayo Brothers actually it's Mayo Brothers is trying to figure out what kind of tumor I had we thought it was your run-of-the-mill glomus <laughs> my doctor thinks he knows what kind it is but I understand that Mayo Brothers is studying it now and when they get it figured out they'll write it in the report and then my surgical report will be completed in the meantime, uh, this is what Mayo Brothers, one of the outstanding medical groups in the United States, in the world, has to say about somebody doing you wrong and about your forgiving them. Really, why should Mayo Brothers care? Well, because they care about your health. If somebody's hurt you and you forgive them or you consider forgiving them, that doesn't mean they weren't wrong. Just because you forgive them, because the Bible tells us to forgive them, just because you forgive them doesn't mean they weren't wrong. And Mayo Brother says, you can forgive without excusing the act. If somebody says, well, I apologize, I spread gossip about you. That doesn't mean you accept the fact that spreading gossip is okay. You're forgiving somebody of what they did to you has nothing to do with what they did to you. It has to do with you taking care of business spiritually, mentally, emotionally, 
and in every way. It says that forgiving is physical or has to do with your physical, your emotional, your mental, and your spiritual well-being. When you forgive somebody of what they did to you, they may not know it, they may not care, it may not be anything one way or the other to them, but it means everything in the world to you. When you forgive somebody for what they did to you, and you can learn to do this, I know there's a lot of things that I tell you, you can learn to die daily, as Paul said, to sin. You can learn to empty yourself daily of yourself so that there's room for the Holy Spirit to come in your life. If you're full of yourself, you don't have any space left for God. Matthew 5, verse 18. First of all, let me put something in here so I don't lose my place. No, I can't do it from this Bible because it's chronological. Let me get another Bible. Uh, closest Bible here happens to be the kids' Bible. Um, Matthew 18, 21. Here we go. Peter came to Jesus. He asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister when they sin against me? Up to seven times? Because that was a number used for many things. Jesus said, I tell you not seven times, but 77. Jesus answered, um, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to collect all the money his servants owed him. I think I won't go into that. I'm just going to leave it at that. That Peter asked Jesus, how many times do you forgive? A few times? No. As often as somebody offends you or tries to offend you or hurt you, that's how often you forgive them. As many times as it takes. Mark 11.25 says about the same thing. Mark 11. Twenty-five. Jesus and his disciples arrived again in Jerusalem. He was walking in the temple courtyards. Then the chief priests came to him, the teachers of the law, and the elders came too. By what authority do you do these things? Now, let's see. I, this Bible doesn't divide up every verse. It divides up by paragraphs, and I've skipped. Let me go back. So I tell you, when you pray for something, believe that you already have it and you receive it. Then it will be yours. And when you stand praying, when you go to God, either in worship and praise or asking for what you want or need, When you stand praying, forgive anyone you have anything against. Then your Father in heaven will forgive your sins. Uh-oh. You ask for something, you don't automatically get it. Yeah. 
we go to Jesus with our shopping list. I want this, 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 this. I think I need this, 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 this. Jesus said, when you pray, forgive. And when you forgive, let me read it. Then your Father in heaven will forgive your sins. Somebody, I said something about forgiveness, and people like to quote little scripture, I guess, to let me know that they know scripture. I mean, nobody does anything without a reason. Everything that somebody types in has a reason. And I said the word forgiveness, what's the first thing that popped into somebody's minds? God forgiving us. Yeah, we like that. We sin. We want God's forgiveness to us. So I say I'm going to mention forgiveness and somebody talks about God forgiving us our sin. That's a good thing. But us forgiving somebody else, oh, that's another matter. That might not be that easy to do. And it's not. I've been there. I haven't always been in my mid-80s. I've gone through many years. How do I know the stuff I tell you? You don't get this stuff when you get your college degrees. But most of our learning that we get, especially after about age 25, comes from our life experiences. Therefore, the longer you've lived, the more life experiences you have, and the more you learn from your life experiences. And that's why old people have a lot of practical knowledge and practical information that you don't get a degree for, but you know this stuff. And you've learned it by being alive, by meeting people, by interacting with other people. And, you know, a 42-year-old has one half the practical life experiences that I have. That's why when I tell you these things, maybe you don't hear them a lot. Because you're probably listening to younger preachers. <laughs> you listen to older preachers, and you get preachers with this kind of experience. So, just like our Second Chronicles 14.7 or 7.14, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, uh, confess and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Everything has a this hand and a that hand. When you pray, forgive those that have hurt you, and God will forgive you. I think there was another scripture I was going to mention. Let's try Matthew 6, 14. We should be talking the Lord's Prayer here. Um, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now we got the gimme's. Give me this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. 
You understand what that means? That means if you forgive the people that have hurt you and sinned against you, if you forgive the people that have sinned against you, then God will forgive you for your sins. You don't forgive others. God's not obligated to forgive you. On the day you're saved, the Lord forgives you every sin, big and small, that you've done up until that moment. But let a few months or a few years go by and somebody hurts you and you don't forgive them, your next sin, and there will be one because I don't see anybody perfect out there, will be forgiven to the degree that you forgive other people. So remember, if you don't forgive, according to Mayo Brothers, your health will suffer. If you don't forgive, according to Jesus, twice in Matthew and once in Mark, your sins won't be forgiven. I want to play you a little clip. Um, for my uh, video, I'm going to tell you where to find it. Uh, it's not going to be where I can show it to you. But uh, just before this evening program, I played a video called The Hiding Place. It's regarding the experiences of the Ten Boom family in the Netherlands during World War II when the Nazis overran the Netherlands and began killing Jews and they began taking them in and hiding them. And then as a result they were arrested. The father died early on. Betsy uh, Corina, who's, they call her Cory, uh, the older sister, is the only one who survived the prison camp. Her sister Betsy constantly, during all they suffered in the camp where she eventually died, told her not to hate and to always forgive. There's a seven minute clip. I want to tell you how to get the movie, The Hiding Place, and also this seven minute clip. And then I'm going to turn the video off. And I hope you'll go see them. The video is rather long. It's a little over two hours. And it's dismal and dark. I mean, it was in the 30s and 40s was during the war. Uh, there's not a lot of color. Uh, there's no beauty in the film. But it's very historically accurate. To see the video, you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to try to put the link and the information with this video. In other words, when you turn on this video, there's a title and then down on the bottom, there's some information. In that information, I'm going to try to give you the link. But if I'm not successful, let me tell you how to get it. Go to YouTube.com. Just open it. The words, what to watch, will come up. Type in, The Hiding Place. Corey Ten Boom. You'll find several copies of it because a number of people have um, uploaded it to YouTube. And they're all the same movie. It was made in the it was made in 1971. 
for the clip about Corey Ten Boom talking about what I just talked about. Uh, do the same thing. Go to YouTube uh, when it goes to what to view. Type in How to Forgive by Corey, C-O-R-R-I-E, 10, boom. I'll try to put that information in for you, but if I don't get it for you, uh, then please look it up with the information I've given you. Until the next video, blessings on you.